All right. This is a special occasion for me, uh, as well as uh, for my group. I just want to say thank you, Brian Brewer, for, for joining me today in this live. Uh, we were just, I was just talking to him saying that this is uh, me getting to pick his brain because he got to interview me just a few months ago. And uh, I've got some burning questions. There's some uh, questions from the group that I'm sure he's gonna, he's gonna go you know, deep dive, uh, but I don't really wanna go too deep in, in to start here. I just wanna kind of introduce you. You've been in my group for a little while now and you've, you've been really instrumental in helping me in my affiliate marketing journey. And I know that you're gonna be able to pr continue providing input and be a resource within my group. So thank you for being inside my Facebook group. But if you could just introduce yourself, uh, kind of give you a background of how you got into affiliate marketing and uh, kind of where you're at today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much, Jamar, for having me uh, in your group. This is a good lesson. You know, I did interview a couple months ago because you had started seeing su some success and uh, I thought that was really cool. Uh, so I brought you into my group to share your story and that provided a bunch of value. But this is a good reminder to always be Always be nice to the people you're interviewing because you never know when you're going to be other shoes. So this is your chance to take your wax at me. But anyway, yeah, thank so you everybody true. who's watch everybody who's watching this today as well. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your time. Uh, we'll try to bring as much value as possible. But yeah, so yeah, my name is Brian. Uh, I've been affiliate marketing since 2012. Actually, uh, I always say you know that's when I I sat down and performed the quintessential search. I opened my laptop and said, "How do I make money online?" And I think we've all been there. And uh, yeah, I came across affiliate marketing. Uh, started with uh, product review blogs and, and uh, created basically WordPress websites, uh, niche authority WordPress websites that basically re reviewed products and then referred people over to Amazon and other places uh, so I could earn a commission. Uh, obviously, that's very SEO focused. So I learned SEO. It was great. Uh, ended up making a couple thousand dollars a month doing that. It was pretty passive. Uh, would I really you, only would you say would you say that that was typical back in 2012 as kind of like a a beginner's way to get started with affiliate marketing? You know, it, it seems like it was um, for a couple of reasons. A YouTube wasn't really what it is nowadays. Um, there certainly right. wasn't TikTok. There wasn't Instagram, um, and, and people were still kind of trying to figure out Facebook. And around that time, Facebook kind of had an update where. So like pre 2012, you could you could just basically build a build an audience on your page, get a bunch of likes, and then you could basically broadcast your message and everybody would see it. But right around 2011, 2012, uh, if I remember correctly, that's kind of when Facebook uh, changed their algorithm. Instead of uh, a chronological feed, it basically they they gave suggested posts. Now we all know what the Facebook algorithm is. Yeah, uh, we know that organic reach is tough. Well, you know when that changed, it kind of freaked everybody out. It's like, well, well Facebook's dead now, and obviously it's not. Here we are on Facebook, still right, right, still using it as a very powerful tool. But that was kind of the narrative that was going on. So yeah, it was like, all right, let's just do blogging. So that that was um uh kind of how I got started. It was certainly more popular than it is is now. You could rank a little bit faster than you can now, uh, and right. it wasn't as established. Um, but also it allowed me to kind of do stuff passively. And what I mean by that is if I had an hour a day, I can I can give that hour a day and, and then pick up right where I left off the next time I had some free time. So that's how I started. Um, I started because my wife and I, we were living in San Diego. Uh, I was working in the restaurant business uh, 50, 60 hours a week. And we just had an, uh, our first child, um, our, our daughter. So it was kind of one of those things was like a wake up call like, yeah, we're doing fine. And the restaurant business is great when you're single or you're newlyweds. But when you start having children, it's like, man, I got to. I got to get out of there so I can be there for the horse riding lessons and dance recitals and all those things that come up later down the road. So that's kind of how I got started. Um, and like I said, I did that for a couple of years. Uh, I got it up to a couple couple thousand dollars a month in passive income, but I had a really hard time scaling. Uh, so uh, I, I started looking for other options. It was like, okay, no sense just beating a dead horse or no sense trying to apply more pressure to something that obviously is going to be very difficult to scale. Let, let's adapt and pivot a little bit. Uh, so I did a little bit of, of drop shipping. I took one of those product review blogs and instead of fo uh, forwarding traffic over to Amazon for the uh, affiliate commissions, I, I created a, a drop shipping store on Shopify and, and drop shipped those exact same products and then used that traffic towards my store. Uh, the good news is margins went way up. The bad news is conversions went way down because I didn't have the trust that's built in with, with Amazon and, uh, 
at, after it was all said and done, I was pretty much net zero as it was. And now I had to deal with shipping and returns and customer service. So I quickly got out of that, um, sold all my blogging assets and then went to YouTube. Um, so that, that was kind of cool. Uh, that that kind of gives you a little bit idea of the value of creating something of value because uh, I was able to sell one of those blogs um, for over thirty thousand dollars, which yeah. was kind of the the bump and the cushion that I needed to be confident in saying, "Hey, let's go full time with this." Um, so I, at that point, we're at two thousand sixteen, and I, I don't I don't really have anything anymore. I sold all my blogs, all the associated socials. I don't have anything other than like a little bit of cushion in my bank account and in the skills that I developed. Um, but I knew that it was time to go in on all in on YouTube because a, I could rank a lot faster. B it was time to put my face out there. I had resisted it so long. Um, but when you, we, we build the brand, you put your face out there it, it, in hindsight, it's just, man, I wish I would have done it four years earlier. Um, because when I got onto YouTube, I got in, in the affiliate marketing space. Uh, I was promoting, uh, mostly Shopify's affiliate program because drop shipping was real hot then and it was starting to become a thing. Uh, basically, I created a case study and a free Shopify course and I just gave it away. So when everybody else was trying to sell their course, I just gave it away and it helped me build a huge, massive following. It helped me earn you know a ton of affiliate marketing commissions uh, right. on the front end with Shopify. And, uh, it and was I'm going to jump, in, history. I'm gonna jump in the, into your story there because that's actually where I actually got introduced to your content because at the end of 2018 and beginning of 2019 was when I started my own journey to try and figure out way, different ways of making money online. Uh, I went to YouTube. Your video was one of the, the, and that's the power of YouTube. Your video was one of the first ones that resonated with me and provided me with a value to start my own drop shipping store. Right. And, and, that was at the, that was probably like December, January of 2018, 2019. And long story short, it lasted about three months while your course, your free course was amazing. And it got me completely set up and, and running paid ads and everything. Uh, I realized very quickly that I did not like drop shipping at all, <laughs> but, uh, but that's what quickly allowed me to pivot to affiliate marketing in March of 2019. So that's kind of yeah, like- that's just the, a that's a perfect testament to even though th those initial failed ventures, they're still valuable learning experiences. Oh, they're in 100%. Them. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I, gained a, I gained a lot because uh, I was learning about, you know, how to set some stuff up, uh, how to run paid ads, like the very, very basics and targeting and things like that. So, I was starting to get my, my hands or feet, you know, wet in terms of the digital marketing, like kind of like the on make money online space. It was a great stepping stone for me to uh, to see because I did break even. I did spend at that like a thousand dollars on ads, but I made a thousand dollars in product, like in you know total product sold. So I kind of broke even, which told me that there was a way to make money online. But it just drop shipping just wasn't for me, and I just pivoted uh, in in March of 2019, and then you know starting my YouTube channel, and, and you know of course with a lot of your guys' success on YouTube, I said, well, if these guys are doing it, why can't I do this? So that's when I started my channel in July of 2019, just kind of following in, in, in your guys' footsteps. But uh, yeah, and, and, and that's cool because I mean, that shows you just the power of like that specific story, like the power of A, thinking long-term and B, leading with value because you were introduced to me uh, because my channel was ranking, my channel was ranking because people were following yeah. me and watching me because I was giving away all this free value. And guess what? Here we are today, uh, a couple of years later in completely different arenas. Um, yet, you know, we're, we're still together. You never know who's watching, who's following. And if you lead with value, you're going to build hopefully a lifetime uh, fan and then eventually an acquaintance and, 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 and all that good stuff that can come into it. So it's a really cool story and in, in how we got together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so one of the the burning questions of what I get from a lot of my uh, my leads, uh, people that connect with me who ask me about how they can get started and everything, they always ask uh, kind of once they go through Legendary Marketers 15 day challenge, uh, they start having that fundamental, like they have that foundation for digital and affiliate marketing, but then they ask like, what is the first step that a beginner should take in turn? Like, should it be, uh, should they choose a product? Should they start creating content? Uh, they, a lot of people, I feel like get really, really, because there are a lot of moving parts, uh, which I mm -hmm. found out really quickly to affiliate mm -hmm. marketing where 
I, I don't ever, I don't ever, ever tell people that it isn't a lot of work because it is in, in the beginning, it's a lot of work because you have a lot of knowledge that you need to acquire to be able to execute on specific strategies to be successful. So what would be your recommendation as in terms of the, the very first step? Like say somebody steps right out of, you know, the 15 day challenge and they're like, like, here we go. Right. Yeah. They're ready to go, you know, hundred miles an hour, but then they're going hundred miles an hour. Nowhere. Right. Nowhere. Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. That's a big problem. I think it, it has for a lot of people. So I guess first and foremost, you know, if you have something you're passionate about and you want to build a business around your passion and lump in affiliate marketing as, as, as a monetization strategy, then by all means go do it. Just know it's going to take longer. Um, and it's not the path of least resistance and it's going to take you a lot longer to monetize. But if you want to do that, do that, but make sure it's really your passion, right? Don't just think, Hey, I did uh, intermittent fasting for three weeks and it was okay. And, uh, it seems like an opportunity. So I'm going to start promoting those products. That's a bad idea. Um, however, if you do want to hit the ground a thousand miles an hour and you want to see success as fast as possible, I recommend going with the product first before you create content, before you, uh, even decide like who you're going to become, like go with the product. So Obviously, the easiest path um, is is to is to stick with what you already know. So if you go through the 15 day business builder challenge, well, hey, you already know something about Legendary Marketer. That would be a great way to uh, partner with them as an affiliate and, and and just go with what you already know. Because regardless of what you're going to promote, it really is going to be beneficial to you to actually buy into the program, learn the system. That's where you're going to create your own unique angles. You're going to learn the language. Your marketing is going to be congruent with the sales copy. Um, and, and I'm sure you go into great detail about all that stuff and how important that is, but that kind of gives you the overview of why it's so important. But let's say you don't want to do that. Let's say you want to choose a different product. Then, um, once again, I still recommend choosing the product. Um, and, and I kind of have a formula for this that I've used a couple of times. So I'll just share that really quickly. Uh, the first thing you want to do in, in my opinion, and this is just based off my experience is, um, is, is choose the arena that you want to participate in. And when I say arena, I mean the three evergreen niches, you know, you're in the health niche, you're in the wealth, or you're in the love and slash relationships, right? I think most people who are, who are considering affiliate marketing have heard of those three niches or niches or whatever you want to call them. Okay. So great. Those are the three big ones. Which one do we want to play in? Well, let's be honest. If you're a beginner and you're watching this interview right now, you're probably interested in making money. So why not just go for it? Like go in the wealth niche, go in the, in the make money online niche. Like there's ways to do this as a beginner. You well, don't you have to make a hundred. You can always transition too. You can train, you can start there. And then once you build up your skills, that's what I've been trying to tell people is, is that once you really start developing those, uh, those digital marketing skill sets, then you can just pivot off of that and 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 spider web out into different you know different niches because you're not limited into to what you can promote. So you can start promoting things that you're passionate about, or you know maybe different types of products, and you'll have that knowledge of driving targeted traffic to those products and services. That's I mean that's 100. percent Once you learn the marketing skill, you, that translates to to everything, and you'll never have to you know as long as you work hard and be smart, you'll never have to worry about you know money or building a business again because you'll have those those skills that are are, are like you said can translate to anything. Um, so once you pick your arena, you know um, then then I you really basically use three criteria. So what I do is the first thing I do is I look in the market, and when I say I look in the market, maybe I'm looking on YouTube, maybe I'm looking on TikTok, maybe I'm looking on Facebook groups, and what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find products that have a buzz. Uh, find products that other people are promoting, right? Because that buzz in the market, that makes your job as a marketer so much easier because if there's buzz in the market, that means the, co the consumers, the market is being educated at scale. Ride the wave, ride the noise is a, is a, is a term that I heard yesterday from Steve Larson, who's big in the, uh, in the uh, ClickFunnels community. Ride the noise that other people are creating. So for instance, if you're familiar with ClickFunnels, Russell Brunson is great, a great marketer. He creates a lot of buzz around click funnels. Don't try to do your own thing. Just ride that wave, kind of ride the coattails, piggyback on that. So that's the first thing I look for. In the arena, I look for a product with buzz. Um, and then once I find that product, I want to make sure two other things happen. So that's criteria number one. The other two things I'm looking for is A, uh, I want to make sure somebody who is making a lot of money with it, right? So let's say the big guy is making a million dollars a year with it. Cool. That means that, hey, if he can make a million dollars a year with it, I can make $10,000 uh, uh, or $100,000 a year with it, right? No problem. Maybe not on day one, but if he can make a million, I can make 10% of that. That's my that's my goal. It's like, okay, cool. 
If this guy's doing it, I can do it. And the other thing I look for, the final thing I look for is I make sure beginners are having success with it too. Is there somebody who's coming in and they're new to the product and are they seeing their first bit of success? Because that proves to me that, hey, I can burst my way into the scene here. I can, I, there's no, there's no barrier to entry that this big top dog has that I, I don't, I'm not seeing, right? Because sometimes those things are hard to see. So if I, if it hits those three criteria, there's a buzz, someone's making a lot of money with it and beginners are making some money with it. And I was like, yes, I go all in and I, uh, that's my product. Then start creating content that will attract people who are interested in buying that product. And, and that product and the, and the benefits it provides will kind of guide you in, in your content creation. So I hope that answers great. your question. Yeah, that does. That's a great segue into kind of the next question I want to get into is uh, how do you generate uh, consistent traffic that that attracts my ideal lead? So how do you generate that consistent type of content? Uh, what have you done in the past that attracts your ideal lead? Yeah, absolutely. So kind of the first thing is, um, you know, I know, I know you're into YouTube. I, I, I saw a lot of my first big wins, like major wins on YouTube as well. So I'm sure there's a yeah. lot of people who are interested in YouTube in this group. Um, so if I'm going to start with YouTube, right? Like that's the benefit of promoting something with a buzz. So let's take, for example, legendary marketer, legendary marketer there, there's a buzz. So if I'm, you know, Brian Brewer is going to start, he's going to become an affiliate marketer. He just went through the 15 day challenge and he's going to promote legendary marketer. Guess what? No one's searching for Brian Brewer, Brian Brewer's right. views on affiliate marketing, right? Nobody cares about me. And, 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 and I try to be as honest as possible. People, nobody cares about you when you're just getting started. Only after years and years and years are people ever going to care what your opinion is. But guess what? People care about what they care about. So they care about legendary marketer. They care about reviews for legendary marketer. They care about what products legendary marketer offers. They 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 wonder if legendary marketer is a scam. They wonder if legendary marketer is a pyramid thing. And, and obviously it's not, but those are things people are wondering. So guess what? Because people are searching that, then you as a nobody, you as Brian Brewer's affiliate marketing channel can attack those searches, right? People are searching for that so you can show up. And, and when you show up in front of those searches, then hey, guess what? Those are people who are warm leads because they're already educated on, on the product that you're promoting. So that that's kind of the, the first step, I would say, is go with that low-hanging, long-tail uh, keyword approach. And then also always look for opportunities because if we would have done this interview uh, six months ago, we wouldn't be talking about TikTok most most definitely. No. Yeah. Uh, but, but I mean, there's some low-hanging fruit. So Absolutely. If it's that low hanging fruit, if it's that easy to get organic traffic, then you better be on that platform. It doesn't have to be your long term long term strategy, but leverage that somehow. Build an email list, build a Facebook group, seed your YouTube channel with that low hanging TikTok traffic, um, and, and the same sort of thing. Just create content like, okay, would my ideal prospect, would somebody who's interested in buying Legendary Marketer, would somebody who's interested in in learning high ticket affiliate marketing, be interested in that. And if the answer is yes, then go ahead and make that content. And also like, see what other people are doing. You know what I mean? Like see what other people in the space, that's the other benefit of promoting a product that has yeah. a buzz is you kind of get to see what's working from other people, where if you just create a product, there's so many things you have to do. You have to excite the market. You have to you talk, you know, just too many things to do. That's why I love affiliate marketing. Yeah, and I think people, uh, and I fell into the same trap last in 2019 when I was just trying to figure out really 2019 for me was just uh, figuring out affiliate marketing and starting to, to develop my my own digital marketing skills. I was just trying to educate myself. Whereas uh, I did a lot of the things that you were talking about in really early uh, 2020, where uh, I, I created more of a content strategy. Uh, TikTok obviously helped as well to be able to push my content out, you know, to the masses because of the organic reach that you can get. But uh, it's it's really interesting that you talked about content strategy and I think people they when they choose these random products whether it's on Clickbank and I'm not gonna knock uh, Clickbank products or some of these like uh, these brand new products that come out on like JVZoo or Warrior Plus or anything but the ability to have that uh, the buzz in the market is like so I think that's what's really changed for me this year is that ch I, ch I started choosing a product that had so much value, but had so much buzz in the market that it, it just, uh, it did, there was more, there were more people that were 
seeing it from other angles, right? They were they were they weren't just seeing me talking about, it, but they were seeing lots of other people talking about it. So then it just kind of validated itself within the marketplace. On yeah, its exactly. It validated itself. It's built in social proof. It just makes your job so much easier. Whereas if, like you said, if you go promote something like a ClickBank product or a new JVZoo product, you already have to have so much trust established with the audience that you're promoting to that they're going to have to look at your email or your your pitch and say, I don't know what this is, but I trust Brian or I trust Jamar. So I'm going to go ahead and buy it. Right. And that's just that, not feasible for beginners. That objection is, is really hard to overcome. If, you know, if they don't know, like, or trust you, it's very mm -hmm. hard for them to, to want to make a purchasing decision. So, right. Unless there's excitement, like around a product, then people are already in a frenzy. And it's like, all right, I, I kind of know this Jamar guy, or I kind of know this Brian guy. And he says it too. I've heard this from everybody else. Let's go buy it. And that, just sure. Really yeah. Good the and, and another example of that maybe may be like the like the knowledge uh, business blueprints, right? With Dean Graziosi and, and Tony Robbins. So there was a massive buzz in the market while while they were leading up, you know, a month or two months out, uh, where it probably made promoting that particular product a lot easier because there was so much buzz in the market, and you know, these guys are really really well known. Uh, where for anybody who's out there uh, and they. You see, if you guys are starting to see a buzz in the market for any type of product, uh, don't be afraid to jump in, start building, you know, creating content, start, you know, start creating a campaign that's directed specifically for that particular product launch. Because if you really go all in for a couple months out, you probably will see success because uh, people will see that content over in that value. And they'll, and they'll say, you know what, I'm going to, you know, this person's been providing me with all this value for the last couple of months, I'm going to purchase through their link versus maybe somebody else's or, or maybe an yeah. ad because they're going to yeah. see ads too, but why would they go through the ad if they can get it through somebody who's been providing them with value for the last couple of months? hundred percent. I mean, that's how I found legendary marketer uh, was I saw people were making good money. I saw this buzz. I'm like, well, I better check this out. Um, that's how I promoted the KBB with, with Tony Robbins, yeah. Dean Graziosi. Yeah. And I, I was late to the party when that first happened in 2019. I started getting emails from everybody talking about this. I had no idea. It wasn't even on my radar. But the first thing I did was I bought it. It was two grand. I was like, I got to buy it. I got to figure it out. And guess what? I found my own unique angle in four days. I started launching YouTube videos and I was just in time for the launch. And because I had a unique angle that I developed and put my voice on, and I only developed this because I wasn't taking the swipe copy that they were giving me. I went through the program and uh, I had videos ranking. Um, and that, I mean, that was probably the easiest 30 grand I ever made in my entire life. You know what I mean? Yeah, it all came from a $2,000 investment. Yeah. Yeah. And certainly you, you, you had an email list, you had an audience uh, that was pretty much in that, you know, that target niche. Uh, but like you said, you found you looked at what other people were doing. You were able to get in soon enough to, with a specific angle to be able to make that, you know, I mean, it's a quick $30,000, right? And yeah, and I had to, and that's a good, important key. I had to figure out how to adapt the offer to be enticing to my audience because the, sure. the, 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 the broad audience that was that that product was developed for was not my audience, but with a little bit of tweaking, it's like, okay, here's the angle. And, and that's why it's, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a huge advocate of whatever you're going to promote. Once you decide you're going to promote it, buy it, go all in on it and, and see what happens. It, it's going to be a good thing usually. Awesome. So uh, we're going to segue again into uh, something that I hear quite frequently in terms mm -hmm. of uh, saturation and competition. So people are saying all the time, well, why am I going to go and promote Legendary Marketer? Why am I going to go promote some of these other, uh, you know, buzz in the market, either softwares or products? There's too much saturation. I'm brand new. Uh, you know, people don't know who I am. Why would somebody ever, you know, purchase their, you know, use my affiliate link to purchase the product? Uh, so if you could address, uh, and I know the answer to this because I, I, I had the same things running through my head thinking, you know, there's too much saturation, too much saturation. It was more of a mindset thing. But if you could explain uh, why saturation really does not matter and you're only competing against yourself, like you're really not competing against anybody else uh, in the affiliate marketing space, because in, in the end, people uh, will decide to purchase through your link for, I mean, th for a variety of reasons, but mm -hmm. uh, there really is no saturation and no competition. I can say that 100% because I dealt with those feelings last year. And I know for a fact in 2020, it's not, it's literally non-existent. 
Yeah, when I fr- when I finally figured out that that promoting the biggest, most saturated product in the market was the biggest hack in the world, like it was like, man, this is this is great. You know, like it life becomes so much easier. And now it's still work and and obviously I've been doing this for eight years and stuff like that. But the bottom line is it's like it, it's the biggest advantage you can possibly have is when everybody's talking about something. So so there's a couple of uh, things that that will hopefully um ease people's minds and first and foremost as we already talked about when there's a buzz the market's being educated at scale it just makes your 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 job as a marketer so much easier like if i came up to you and i had two phones and 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 they were both three hundred dollars and one was an iphone and one was a no-name brand you ever heard of which one would you buy you'd buy the iphone even if the other one i had was 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 from the future right like let's say hypothetically it's from the future and it was it was a thousand times better I might be able to sell it to you, but I would have to sell the crap out of it. Whereas otherwise you'd be like, yeah, $300 iPhone, I'll take it. You know what I mean? So, so that's what we want to do. We want to make our job as easy as possible. And, th- and that comes with, you know, a bunch of people uh, or saturation in the market. Um, the other thing or, or another thing, I guess I should say is, is you have to, as a marketer, it, it, you know, you have the opportunity to control the narrative because every, you know, your, your customers are going to, um, have their own, you know, limiting beliefs or, or self doubts, or, or or they're going to listen to too many people who are telling them no, this won't work or whatever. So you can control the narrative and say, hey, listen, think about how many people you are promoting legendary marketer. Think about how many people uh, you've seen talk about it. If, if this wasn't a good product, do you think this many business owners would trust their name and their brand with it? Right. Of course not. You know what I mean? Like if it was a no name product, then I'd be. If you're the only one promoting it, then I'd be skeptical. But if, if everybody who come across is trusting their brand, their business, because that's really what this is. I mean, you know, we affiliate marketing's fun and marketing's fun and shooting TikToks. Sometimes you show like the, the sexy side of it. But I know I'm supporting a family of four. You know what I mean? I know right. I have car payments and insurance payments and and all those things. So like, am I going to trust my name to this product? And like everybody else, if it's a if it's a crap product that doesn't get results, absolutely not. So you could communicate that to your audience and it's like, oh yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. Um, you know, and, and, and finally, I guess the, the final point is, is, you know, like you said, if you can just kind of get in front of the click, right. And let everybody else hype up the buzz and then you're just there to, to offer the click. So you're going to get the commission out of all the education that everybody else has done in the space. So it can make yeah. things happen a lot faster because people have to go through their buying decisions on their own time, whether that's a week, a month or a year. But if they're hitting, getting hit from multiple angles, not just you, but every time they log on, log on to TikTok, they see someone talking about their success with the 15 day business builder challenge. That's going to accelerate their, their path to purchase in most cases. So that's a great thing for you. And if you're, I guess the final objection is like, if you're concerned that why are people going to click on my link, right? Like, Mm -hmm. sure, maybe they're going to come into my audience, but maybe they're going to click on somebody else's link because they're offering a better bonus or something like that. And here's what I, here's what I say to that. And and it's, it's this simple. So let's say you and I, Jamar are going and we're going to go in front of a kindergarten class. Let's say there's 20 kindergartners there five, six-year-olds, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to go there and we've been invited in for the day to help them learn how to tie their shoes. So you're going to stand on one side of the room and, and, and start tying shoes. And I'm going to stand on the other side and start tying shoes. Basically, we're teaching them how to tie their shoes. Well, you and I probably both tie our shoes the same way. And if we don't, we get the same result. Yep. But once you know it, half the kids are going to come and, and, and watch you and half the kids are going to come watch me. Why? Who knows? You know? Um, it, it, it's not that you're any better or I'm any better at teaching or tying shoes. It's just, it's just people gravitate to who they gravitate towards naturally. And if you leverage that thought, like just be yourself, then you actually play right into the algorithms and what they want. For instance, like on one of YouTube's pages, you know, on the first sentence, if you ask like, what does YouTube want? How do I create videos that get go viral or get traction or get views? And YouTube's answer is our number one goal is to try to match viewers with videos that they are likely to watch and enjoy. So mm-hmm. there's no one behind YouTube's desk saying, yep, this is the best affiliate marketing video. Check. This is the best legendary marketer review. Check. No, people are going to find what they like and YouTube's going to help the people who find who like you for you find you for you, if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Absolutely. Uh, I agree pretty much with everything you said. Uh, and I've been trying to 
learn over the last couple of months because you never stop learning uh, in digital and affiliate marketing uh, with, and we had conversations about overcoming objections and, and things like that. So those are all things that I've been trying to work on, you know, uh, behind the scenes, uh, which requires a little more time, a little more one-on-one, -on -one, a little more personal touch with people. Uh, but I think that that stuff is important when you provide that one-on-one -on -one value to people. Uh, it goes a really, really long way. And I've seen that dramatically over the last month. Uh, so I want to talk about uh, kind of like my mission statement for my channel and for my brand, like Future Affiliate Pro is time, location and financial freedom, right? Because ultimately, like a lot of us are looking for time, location and financial freedom. I know uh, I have seen uh, and I'm not sure if I may be on some of your TikToks where I've seen you on vacation right uh you you take uh time with to spend with your family pretty much uh at your leisure and uh, correct me if i'm wrong because your business has provided you with uh, and this is what affiliate marketing uh has provided you it, it appears is to have time location and financial freedom where you can go and do things however you feel and you can spend that time with your family without actually you know having to go to a nine to five or be uh, you'll have to be, you know, you know, you have to go to a, a, like a job, right. Where you have to drive a commute or something like that. You work from home and you can work on the road. You can work. I mean, but you don't need to work because your business is automated and affiliate marketing is, is pr you know, promoting other people's products. So the company's products that you're promoting really do a lot of work on the back end. So your content and everything else, uh, continues to drive, you know, targeted leads and sales towards that product, no matter if you're on vacation with your family or if you're, you know, beside the pool while your kids are playing or whatever it may be. Could you just speak to how affiliate marketing has really changed your and I don't want I don't like I don't want you to go too deep, but just kind of explain like how it's affected you personally in terms of like your day to day life and, you know, uh, more of like your your family life, how it's benefited you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Hold on one second, please. Sorry about that. I have a, I have a daughter who's uh, homesick from school, but that's a perfect example. Like I'm not, I yep. can't make this stuff up, right? So my <laughs> wife had a had a hair appointment scheduled. Um, you, she's had it scheduled for a month for today, or probably six weeks for today. And if you cancel last minute, they're going to charge you X amount of dollars. We don't, we don't cancel those hair appointments. <laughs> yeah. So, so she had to go. Well, it turns out my daughter got sick. She had to stay home from school. Luckily, that's not an issue. So my wife's at the hair appointment. She just came and asked me a question. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's example number one. But yeah, examples. I mean, one year we went, we decided um, my, my uh, wife's uh, maid of honor from when we got married. She was having, they were having their second child. So we, we flew out to Portland where they live. And uh, so she could be there for the birth and, you know, help all that stuff that, that you, all those things that you need when you have a second baby and stuff like that. And we stayed there for three and a half weeks and it was fine. I worked during the day, but I could do that because location independence, right? Um, right. You know, it's, it's never um, uh, automated in the sense that you can just walk away from it forever. Uh, and, and that's probably pretty obvious, but yeah, I mean, it is location right. independent and it, it doesn't have to be like, if I can't do something today, you can always do it later today or tomorrow. Like, okay, something comes up. I can always push this to later. So you can really move things around. You're not, you're not, you know, uh, hold, held down to the nine to five schedule or whatever. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, I've seen this firsthand with, with affiliate marketing versus creating your own digital products. So if you create your own digital products, then yeah, you might be location independent you may, might be able to quit your job, but you run into some serious uh, time uh, requirements with fulfillment on that stuff. And so, for example, in, in 2016, 2017, I was 100% affiliate marketing in 2018 and 2019. Um, I added courses and coaching. Um, in 2020, I closed all my courses. And in 2020, I did my final group coaching program in uh, June. Now I'm 100% affiliate marketing again and loving it. And it's not that I don't like helping people. It's just like, I can help so many more people. I can make so much more impact when I'm just you know, being a leader, uh, giving away free value, and then figuring out how to monetize with, with affiliate programs that don't require any fulfillment um, on my end. So it, it allows me to, I think, give more, um, to be honest with you. But yeah, I mean, you know, everybody's got to go through their own journey. But I, I saw it 
and then tried to go chase the shiny object of courses. And, and guess what? I came back to 100% affiliate models. So um, learn from my mistakes. So, you know, and everybody's different. Some people love the courses, but yeah, that, that's just my story. So take it for what it's worth, I guess. Yeah. And I, I definitely got some value uh, out of the courses that you provided. Uh, I, I know that I purchased, you know, some of your case studies and, and some other stuff. And I pulled so many nuggets out of that and just implemented those, you know, what was in those case studies into my own affiliate marketing business. And what I try to stress to people is, is that it, affiliate marketing, once you get over the uh, kind of the shell shock of all the information, like overload and everything, it really is an amazing side hustle. I do this with a full-time job, you know, in the military, I was sitting at my desk yesterday as commissions were rolling in. And that is the power of, you know, starting to learn a new high income skill that can provide you with an additional additional sources of income that you didn't have before. And, and I'm doing this personally because I want to make sure that if anything were to happen to you know, my job, which I'm in, I work for the government. So like, I probably will never lose my job until I retire right. in a couple of years. However, what I'm saying is, is, is that uh, not everybody is safe, right? These are kind of like uh, uncertain economic times. We're in an election year, you know, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, we've, we've had to deal with the pandemic this year and everything. So a lot of people's hours have been cut back. I've, I've had a lot of people reach out to me saying like, hey, I've been out of work, like, you know, I need to make some money really fast. And I'm like, all right, well, affiliate marketing is something that is an amazing, uh, it's amazing skill to learn. Uh, however, it takes time, like it's going to take time to, to, to build a tribe, to build your email list, to build a following on YouTube and TikTok and build your system and get it, you know, to where it's, you know, where all you have to do is create the content and everything's running, you know, pretty seamlessly. I mean, you should always be split testing and, and uh, you know, testing your convert, you know, checking your conversions and all that stuff. But, but for the most part, for beginners to come in, I try to stress to them, this is an amazing business model that that you can scale into a full-time job like you did back in 2006. And, and you can be successful living, running your own affiliate marketing business and doing this full-time. And you can start just with like the little baby steps, just doing it on the side, working on it a, an hour or two every day. Um, yeah, so uh, I've loved the affiliate marketing model ever since I, I started learning about it back in uh, 2019. And going forward, I will probably continue to stay on the affiliate marketing model uh, for as long as possible. Uh, hopefully after I retire, because that's my plan is to uh, is to transition into full time affiliate marketing once I retire here in a couple of years. Uh, so I have another question here. I want to make sure I don't miss any of my questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so it's easy. So we talked about uh, so it's easy to get overwhelmed. Uh, why is it important to play play the long game? So I've been doing this for 18 months. And I feel like I really got a lot of traction within my content, with my platforms. It took a long time to get a thousand subs on YouTube. A long time. It took me like almost ten months to get it. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna be able to hit five thousand before the end of the year. That's uh, awesome, man! Congratulations. So, That's so cool. So I went from I went from five hundred uh, January first, and some people have a lot more success. And some people have a lot less success with YouTube, but I think the biggest thing is to not really com compare your content or your journey with anybody else, uh, but set goals for yourself that you believe are attainable. Uh, it's easy to get overwhelmed with uh, a lot of all the moving parts. Uh, playing the long game with affiliate marketing, how important is that? I mean, it, it's everything. Um, you know, I. I I take uh, my whole philosophy, I guess, it, it, I think I got this from Russell Brunson, who we, who we already talked about once, but it's not, you know, he said this about click funnels, and I say this about everything uh, you know, I ever promote. It's not if people are going to buy, it's when they're going to buy. Um, you know, eventually they're going to buy something. Um, I, I mentioned the coaching that I did in 2020, early part of this year. Um, you know, I had people in that group that made, like, you know, I've been with you for two years and I've never purchased a thing, but guess what? Yeah. They just gave me 300 bucks. You know what I mean? And we start doing that yeah. at scale. I mean, that's great. You know, we've, we've talked about you. You're my first ever ClickFunnels uh, oh, yeah, affiliate yeah. referral. So yeah, we, haven't um, even, we haven't even talked about that, that when, when you started promoting ClickFunnels uh, more, I mean, it was probably back in like February, March of 2019, when I started getting into affiliate uh -huh. marketing, that was when you started really uh, transitioning or starting to promote ClickFunnels. I was your first referral, yeah. not only that, but I'm still that's earning you monthly recurring commissions as an affiliate. 
And that's the yeah. powerful thing about affiliate marketing is, is that when you give value to people, like he gave value to me and I took it and I took action with it and I started building and learning about, you know, learning to build my own affiliate marketing business. I kept the same tools that I was learning on that I was being taught on. And I'm still your affiliate today, right? I'm still, yeah, and I think I calculated you know, still, it. Yeah, it was. I don't know how much, whatever, six, seven, yeah, eight hundred, so, whatever. Yeah, that's the thing. I, I've made six or seven hundred dollars off you, but guess what? Do you care? No, you're happy, right? No, like I introduced no. you to something that changed your life, and that's the yeah. key with affiliate marketing, and, and that's how you have to think about it. Because if it takes you a year to get somebody to comfortable to the point where they believe in themselves enough where they buy, but then they earn you thirty eight dollars every month for the next ten years, like you got to have that mentality, and that's the beauty of the internet is is it's not going to take you a year to earn your first commission in most cases, obviously, right. but you got to have that approach and, and it just builds on itself. So maybe year one, you make $10,000, you, you bust your button. Maybe you make $10,000 total, but then in year two, you make 50. And then in year three, you make 150. Then in year four, you make 350. You know what I mean? Right. And that's just the way it works. And, and um, you know, you have to play the long game because so for me, I've pretty much nailed this down. Uh, with years of trial and error. So when I decided I was going to go promote Legendary Marketer, I was like, okay, I'm going to systematically build out a campaign um, uh, starting with YouTube and stuff like that. And, and it took me about six months to get to the point where like, okay, cool, this is really humming along now. And, and I know what I'm doing. So, yeah. you know, obviously, like, like you said, it, it's always learning. I, when I say I know what I'm doing, I'm not trying to say I'm the smartest guy in the world or I'm the best affiliate marketer on the planet, but like I kind of get the, get the pieces and, and it still takes me six months to get something going. So if you're starting, okay, well maybe you're going to have a six month learning curve and then you're gonna have another six. I mean, you're looking at, you gotta be realistic about it, but, but like you said, um, it, it, it changes your life. And, and I mean, you're sitting here, um, you, you know, you pretty much have a set retirement date or you have a pretty good idea when you're going to oh, yeah. retire. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and I mean, summer, how, summer. Summer 2025 will probably end up being my, yeah. my, my retirement date. I've kind of set it already. And how comfortable you are you saying, hey, guess what? I can probably be a full-time affiliate marketer. Yeah. I mean, you're not, if you're not, not, only, that, not only that, but I, I'm confident in the next year to two years that it's going to, the income and the skills that I've developed might surpass what I'm making in my full-time job. 100%. <laughs> that, I, that, I, I bet you, expectation. I bet you, you'll hit, I bet you, if you stay on the same trajectory that you're at, I bet you'll hit that goal in 2021. And I'm not even joking. I bet you by this time next year, you'll be making more with affiliate marketing than you will be in your full-time job. Now, I can't guarantee that, but I bet you. Right. And and through the first chunk, and, and that's that playing that long game, through the first chunk of 2020, I had already made more than I had made in affiliate commissions going from March of 2019 to the end of the year. So in nine months, so it took me half the amount of time to make the same amount of commissions. And then, you know, the second half of, of the second half of 2020, I've already made more in a, a affiliate commissions, you know, times three or four than I did the previous year. So it literally, it snowballs where you start developing these skill sets and you know exactly what works and does not work. And then you just double down on those particular things. And then lo and behold, you know, here you are, you know, YouTube channel starts to take off, you know, email list is now over five, six, 7,000 people uh, where you're able to, you have this audience and then it just gets easier. It's almost like you do all this hard work for so long and you feel like nothing's working. And, and it, all of a sudden you wake up and you're like, wow, I'm earning commissions every single day. Like mm -hmm. I could never have imagined this a year ago, but here I am today. All that work was worth it. Uh, I, I, I want to leave off of just one more question here. And uh, I want to talk about what what do you think is, is it easier to do affiliate marketing today than you think in 2016 or 2014 or 2012? Uh, do you think the barrier to entry has changed for beginners? Because there's a lot of beginners inside my, uh, here inside this Facebook group who, uh, have that probably that mentality that it's like it's 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 too hard today in 2020 uh i, sh I wish i would have gotten started in 2016 or 2014 uh but here i am today like i i don't know if this is going to be for me or not um, a lot of my audience is uh is from TikTok where they were just introduced to affiliate marketing you know through other people's content and my content and then they ended up inside my facebook group so they're still trying to figure things out 
Uh, what would you say to those people uh, is different in terms of like barrier to entry and uh, and what kind of success that that you think that they can see? Because you've been in this game for quite a long time now. I've looked up to you for you know for the last couple of years uh, as somebody who you know has been ethical and has always provided value first and you know, prove to people that if you just follow certain systems and you follow and you do it the right way, you can be successful. So I know that's kind of like a zigzag of, of a question. Yeah, no, I got you. So, so, so let's, let's think back about all the things that we've, you know, as, as let's just put ourselves in the position as brand newbies, right? We just heard about affiliate marketing on TikTok and we're like, all right, this, this sounds reasonable. I, I, I like it because A, B, and C, how, how do we do it? Right. What do we need to do? So, if we're in that position, we can always think back about the opportunities that we missed, right? So I talked about, you know, in twenty in 2010, if we were on Facebook, it was super simple. You just run, you know, $20 worth of ads to sure. get a likes campaign, and then you just spam the crap out of the people who liked you. But then things change, and you can't do that anymore. Yeah. Then in 2014, 2015, you know, people built million, billion-dollar businesses just off the back of Instagram. Guess what? Then the yeah. feed went to uh, from chronological to suggested, or, and guess what? That opportunity is gone. So you're always going to look back at and say, man, I missed that opportunity. Um, let's be honest. It's not as easy to burst out of the scene on YouTube in 2020 as it was in 2015 or whatever. It's just sure. not. There's more competition now. Um, so that's an opportunity missed, so to speak. Um, yeah, we can always look back at those opportunities missed. But guess what? Here we are sitting in 2020. It's like this TikTok thing is ridiculous. We haven't seen anything like this since no. 2015 Instagram. So I didn't, okay. I didn't I didn't start it until like April really of this year. So, yeah, I didn't start really going all in until April or March of this year too. I think I'm sitting at thirty eight thousand followers or something like that. So yeah, it's crazy. But um, yeah. So that's the thing. There's always going to be a new opportunity. Um, second of all, you know, we talk about barrier to entry. When I started in 2012, man, I remember specifically like I wanted to create. A, an email capture page, like a lead capture page. And I wanted it to be, you know, everything was desktop back then. We weren't as focused on mobile as we are now, but I, I thought it'd be really cool to have a video on the left-hand side of me introducing the opportunity. And I wanted to create a little email box on the right-hand side. So it was a two column page. And I remember following these tutorials for like three days, trying to figure out how to get this page to look just right. Like HTML And I finally got page. it. Yeah, HTML and code and all that. Yeah, and I was like, cool, man. I got it. So the video would play in the right size and the right aspect ratio. And my and the email capture was on the right. It's like, this is awesome. And you know what? It didn't matter a, a darn bit. You know what I mean? It didn't increase yeah. conversions. But that's the difference. Like back then, everything was so hard to get going. And you had to spend yeah. so much time setting things up. Now with things like ClickFunnels and all the other cool stuff, like StreamYard that we're using right now, like how easy is it to live stream? Like that. Right. This would have been so hard to do back, in, you know, it wasn't even available back in 2012, but it used to be so hard to do. You had to get stream codes and put them in here and make sure you got your import put sources. So from that respect, everything is so much easier now. And, and so I understand that there's always opportunities missed, but you got to remember those opportunities that were missed were only achieved or, or captured by a few people. There's... Yeah. The other 7 billion people who missed that opportunity too. And that doesn't mean that there's not something, um, you know, that there's some, there's definitely uh, opportunities right now. We just mentioned TikTok. And, and like I said, it's easier than ever. Plus there's more available information than ever. Like there would have, ne in 2012, there would have never been this interview. That's just two guys giving their honest opinion. It would have been yeah. people trying to <laughs> rip you off and sell you some $37 product because guess what? Nobody knows any better anyways. Right. So yeah, when the when the inter internet was in its uh, a more infant state, it was it was more of a wild wild west, even so, even more so than it is now. Um, so yeah, I think everything just gets more simple. Obviously, there's more people on it, but more people means more buyers. We're much more comfortable pulling out our credit card and buying something on the internet now than we were back in 2012. So I mean, it just yeah. it, it's just it's as easy as it's going to be ever. So why not just start? I guess is, is the point. Yeah, and I think a lot and. Uh... To transition, I think there's a lot of emphasis today on, especially since we've been at home and kind of cooped up uh, for most of 2020 uh, into kind of like self-learning or digital products. I, I think I think there's an opportunity right now with, uh, there's gonna be a lot of digital products and softwares that are gonna be coming out to help people learn different skills. And with that opportunity, I now I see from like an affiliate marketer's lens where 
there's going to be a lot of, a lot of digital products out there that are going to be launched or that are going to be coming out that are going to provide a service to people where you can become an affiliate for these. Yeah, I mean, you could be the next affiliate for the next great software or the next great digital product that comes out. So uh, it's like you said, there's always an opportunity. Uh, uh, don't ever, I, I don't think people should ever really feel like, uh, like they missed the bus, right? It's like, yeah. there's always, there's always going to, you know, maybe, well, like, like people didn't see TikTok coming, you know, five years ago, 2014, 2015, but here we are another mm -hmm. great, amazing opportunity. Just like uh, YouTube was an amazing opportunity from like 2010 to 2015, mm -hmm. where it was so easy to grow for people to grow an audience for the people who took advantage of it. You know, they're sitting pretty today, right? You know, collecting their ad revenue and they have a massive audience. Uh, but I think it's just more or less just grabbing the bull by the horns taking advantage of the opportunities that you have today, knowing that in the future, there's going to be so many opportunities with traffic, with, uh, you know, you know, places that you can place your content onto with products that you can partner up with to promote that uh, you'll never run out. You'll never, I don't see anybody ever really running to a place where they're like, all right, well, you know, the product I was promoting, you know, it kind of fizzled out or, you know, there will always be, there will always be other opportunities out there with affiliate marketing. So yeah, and the thing is, is is I get countless offers every single week, sometimes every single day. Yep. Hey, will you promote my product? New There's product. more yep. affiliate offers than there are good affiliates. So right. we're we're like the I mean, honestly, like we're affiliate marketers are like the number one in demand people on the whole planet because everyone's got a product, everyone's creating a product, but they need isn't affiliates it, to promote it. And isn't so, it like a 12, it, I, I read an article that said it was like a $10 billion industry or a $12 billion industry. That has right? to be way underreported. I it mean, everybody, uh, Amazon alone probably pays out ten billion, you know, $5 billion worth of commissions. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's way underreported. Um, so Jamar, I just noticed there's a couple of questions over here that are specifically addressed to me in the chat. If I could just answer those really quickly. Yeah. And then if you have anything Go else, right. I'd be happy to. Absolutely. Cool, cool. And, then, so, and then we can wrap this up. Awesome. So I just see that uh, one person who I, I can't say their name, but um, thank you for answering the, asking the question. It says, is the majority of the tr uh, leads coming from YouTube or paid ads? So um, if you want to talk about the vast majority of my leads right now, the vast majority of my numbers, my numbers, uh, the number of leads I'm getting from TikTok right now outpaces both advertising and, and YouTube. Um, so the way I think about it is like, there's always a certain amount of work to be done. So if it's easy to generate leads, you're going to have to generate more work on the back end. Um, if it's harder to generate leads, like with YouTube, the conversions will be a lot easier on the back end. So to answer the question, most of my leads come from TikTok, but that doesn't mean that's where most of my revenue is coming from. That's right. Um, next is, is paid ads. I get more leads from paid ads every day than I do from YouTube and those convert the um those turn into the most amount of money and i think that's because i can control the the environment like i control that conversation from beginning to end because they're not out in the in the space they see my ad then they come into my list then i control where they go so i control that environment um but i'm still working on scale with that obviously i'd love to spend more but you got to do it profitably so i'm still working yeah. on that and then the fewest amount of uh, leads right now come from youtube but the conversion rates are incredible. So if someone comes over to my list from YouTube, they're going to buy something most likely. So hopefully that right. answers that question. Um, the next question, I don't know if there's the same person or not, but it says, besides legendary marketer, what other high ticket products do you promote? I think this is important to understand that you don't have to necessarily add uh, income streams to add more revenue. So right now I promote legendary marketer. That's my front end product. So like all my content I'm, I'm creating, all my ads, it all sells legendary marketer. And that brings people in. Um, and then guess what? If you're if you're going to be an affiliate marketer, you need click funnels. So I promote click funnels on the back end. If you're going to be an affiliate marketer, you need an autoresponder. So I promote AWeber and GetResponse on the back end. Um, if you're going to be an affiliate marketer, guess what? You need more traffic. So I promote a a white label product um, that that teaches you how to funnelize your Facebook profile on the back end. Uh, yeah. Guess what? You can also promote that product as an affiliate. So I offer that opportunity. And um, recently I was interviewed they all, um, they all yesterday. I was, all, these pig, all, all, these, all these products piggyback off of each yeah. other. They're Basically all in you want, They're all connected. You want to keep a congruent uh, uh, straight line if it makes sense. And once again, like I, if you put too many things on the front end, um, you're just going to confuse your audience and, and a confused audience doesn't buy a confused buyer doesn't buy. 
Um, and and the last question I see here. So, oh, this is a good one. I just started with Legendary Marketer late July. I'm still learning and have to go back to referring video notes to my trying to build my skills. So this is someone who's still trying to understand the concepts it looks like, and that's cool. Yeah. What can I offer people on a YouTube channel? And that's a great question. Like people say, okay, yeah. I get it. I got to create content, but I'm brand new. How do I create content, right? Like if I don't, if I haven't been doing this for eight years, like you have, Brian, how do I create content? Simple, learn, do, and then teach. Take something you learn, implement it in your business, and then go ahead and teach it. And just remember, you're not trying to get people to expert status. You're trying to get people to the point where they're ready to go buy Legendary Marketer, if that's what you're promoting. Legendary right. Marketer is the expert. You just got to get them ready and comfortable and confident for them to say, hey, I'm ready to learn. So you can do that very easily. And, and that's where you got to focus your content. Um, if you are doing been doing it for a few months and have not had success yet, what do you do? You keep focusing on the long term, providing value, building the brand refining your skills um, it, because you just, the, the success comes after the hard work is already done. Yeah. It's a, it's an evolution certainly to, uh, uh, to understand the, the bigger picture. Uh, what's mm -hmm. there is that you're, you're continually trying to improve yourself, your skills. Uh, you're investing your, you're investing time and you're investing money in yourself to building a skill that will, uh, that will 10 X or even 20 X your return a year from then. And it's hard to see. Sometimes it's hard to see that picture of, you know, because uh, when I started, I think, um, and I told this story before, my first affiliate commission, I think was like $4.95 or something from like a get <laughs> response. But I posted it inside your group where I was like, but it took me four months to get right. that. Work, right. You're, you're investing in yourself. You're investing tons, hours and hours and hours, and you're not seeing any return on your investment but you're just getting started. And when I got that first commission, I was like, I mean, I literally ran straight to your Facebook group and I was like, I got my first commission. Right. Like, yeah. I was excited because it validates all of your efforts. And, and then if you can get one sale, you can get two and then two turns into four. And then you turns into like daily, you know, where you're just getting, you know, commissions on a daily, uh, I mean, almost like clockwork where you just yeah. know exactly what you need to do to, you know, to, to get that, constant steady stream of, of wins but man is it, it it is hard when you get started i understand like i people reach out to me and they say like i i'm not making any commissions and i said and it's hard to t look at them in the face and be like just keep going just keep going like i just i know what it feels like i went months and months and months before i earned four dollars <laughs> yeah and, and 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 i think the thing that we really have to be uh like we can be honest about and because i'm not trying to sell anybody anything here just you know but um Affiliate marketing is hard, but guess what? It's easier than most things. And guess what? When you're using content, you're pretty much removing all risk. All you're doing is, you know, like if you go out, like if you go and you're going to sell a private label product on Amazon, you might be 10 grand in the hole before you even figure out if this thing's going to work or not. So that's a lot of risk. Yeah. Affiliate marketing, it's easier than a lot of things. And there's there's really no risk as long as you don't be silly and start throwing uh, throwing your money around. And like you said, eventually, you know, it's going to kick in. Like imagine going to college for four years. Not only are you not seeing any return on your investment, you're shelling out 15 grand a year, depending on where you're going. Just, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so in hindsight or, or, or relative to that, boy, learning affiliate marketing and, and taking a year to get and really nail it down seems like yeah. a better alternative. Yeah. So you just, and, and that's what I recommend to people is, is that just set, you know, set your goals out there a short, when I say short, medium and long-term goals, uh, and understand that success, you're not going to see it right away. But as long as you continue to, you know, invest in yourself, whether it be time, you know, financial, whatever it may be, if you keep at it a little bit every single day, that's what I did. One to two hours every single day and just kept grinding away, grinding away, content, 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 learning, learning, learning. And then every once in a while, purchase a product, right? That's going to help speed up your, uh, your learning process and your success. And that's what happened, you know, over the course of 2019 to 2020 for me is, is that I just continued to chip away and continue to invest in myself and continue to do these things. And then eventually you start getting those wins. So, yeah. And then you have days like you had yesterday, you had a pretty big day yesterday, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a, <laughs> it was an amazing day. It was just a yeah. validation of the yeah. effort that goes in uh, that. And then, and it's almost like the same as that first win, right? When you get that first commission, 
Uh, and then when you start getting repeated larger commissions, kind of the high ticket commissions, it validates, you know, what you're doing is right, uh, what you're learning is correct, uh, that you have the right, you're following the right people, right? You have the same, you know, you're following the, the right mentors and people who are doing things the right way. And if you keep on that path that you will be successful. Uh, I, I want to see, I'm shooting to end up on day one or uh, what do you call it? Uh, present day legendary marketer. I want to finish as the number one affiliate. You beat me out yesterday by the end of the day. I think I ended up falling to like number three. Uh, but that just, I mean, I started out, I was at the bottom, you know, and I was, yeah. I was getting some days, but I was on the leaderboard, you know, and I was like, all right, I'm getting daily commissions of, you know, everything's working, but how can I get to the top? And then, you know, you have kind of like a, a breakthrough day or a multiple breakthrough days where you get close to the top, but you can't get quite to the, to the, to the uh, super affiliates, but, but that just demonstrates what you're doing is working, right? So then you just double. So what am I going to do? I'm going to double down on what's working for me and, uh, and just keep pressing forward. That's pretty much yeah, it. You got to enjoy the process too, because chasing that oh, first yeah. commission, now you're chasing that, that leaderboard. Now, you know, like yeah. you know, I'm chasing consistency above a certain number. Um, you know, I'm chasing, uh, you know, ad spend that I want to hit. So, you know, like you're always chasing something. So you may as well just enjoy the process because there's always stress. Like uh, yesterday, I don't even want to tell people how much money I lost yesterday it, it, because my my ads weren't converting yesterday. But you know what? That's yeah. part of the process. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, so, so you know, and you're always chasing something. You're always going to have frustrations. So maybe just try to enjoy the process and, and you'll, you'll get there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Uh, if there's no more questions here in the comment section, Thank you, uh, everybody who kind of hung out. I think there's there's five or six people hanging out. Uh, thank you if you guys stayed for the entire interview. Uh, I want to thank you again, Brian, for for doing this. Uh, obviously, uh, it's going to reciprocate. Where uh, I would love to be interviewed by you again. Uh, maybe you can use me as like a, a case study or a success story. Uh, I don't think I'm like, you know, I'm not a super affiliate yet, but uh, I think I'm a a good demonstration of what you can do when you consistently just take action every day and you invest time uh time and you know your own financial you know investment into wanting to build something that's uh that's going to provide you with that time location and financial freedom at some point whatever you know whatever it may be for me but uh thanks again it was yeah it was my pleasure my pleasure thank you so much for having me i really appreciate it thanks for everybody who watched it was it was great thank you yeah. All right, everybody. Uh, this video will be up uh, inside the Facebook group. I'm going to leave it up in there. Uh, make sure if you guys want to, to share this video, you know, do the hashtag live, hashtag replay and all that stuff uh, so we can try and push this 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 interview out. But again, uh, thanks, Brian. Until until the next interview, I'd love to interview you here, uh, you know, three months, six months from now. And I'm sure there will be lots more questions that we can go over. Sounds great. I'll do it. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Bye.